Dan Ryder, Allison Gilman, Bob Gregory, AccuWeather Forecast, and Don Hines Sports Reel. This is News Center 13, live at 5. Preliminary information indicates that the mission was accomplished. But did the message? The Iraqi leader is playing war games again, games the United Nations says he'll lose. Here are the latest developments for you now. U.S. and Allied warplanes conducted a limited attack on Iraq focused on fewer than 10 Iraqi aircraft missile batteries in southern Iraq. President Bush is deploying a battalion of six to 800 ground troops to Kuwait to guard against Iraqi incursions. The White House, meantime, is warning Iraq that additional actions will be taken if they continue to violate U.N. resolutions. The Bush administration believes Saddam Hussein is trying to test the United States during a period of political transition. There are, there's strong support for the military raid for the United Nations in Hoosier hometowns. Our coverage of tonight's top story begins with this SkyPass satellite report from Washington. American aircraft departed the Kitty Hawk carrier in clear weather but in darkness as other planes, including British and French, took off from Saudi Arabia. Their targets, missile sites, and supporting buildings. One officer called it a short, sharp, telling lesson for Saddam Hussein. Coalition aircraft at approximately 1.15 Eastern Standard Time this afternoon attacked surface-to-air missiles and associated infrastructure in southern Iraq. Preliminary information indicates that the mission was accomplished. No casualties were reported among the dozens of flights made over enemy targets. The attacks were limited to the southern exclusionary no-fly zone where allies are protecting Shiite Muslims from Saddam's repression and where Saddam has been moving missiles around which are a threat to the allies. The action was also seen as punishment. Saddam Hussein has refused to permit flights of UN weapons inspectors in Iraq, part of his taunting of the allies. What we did with Saddam Hussein was uh, sort of throw a rage at him in a poker game said, we don't like what you're doing, and this is what we're doing about it. Now the ball's in your court. The president has ordered a battalion of troops to Kuwait, about 800 men, just in case. They could stop any more illegal border crossings by Iraqis who have been removing weapons and equipment. Once again, the uh, American military, in, co in coalition with strong allies, uh, has performed in a superb fashion. Uh, we, our planes are all accounted for. With only a week left in office, the president received the full support of President-elect Clinton. Well, the president-elect, as I said, can, supports President Bush in every action he has taken so far, and he will also work to ensure compliance with all U.N. resolutions. The White House made it clear the action was in response to a pattern of defiance by Saddam Hussein, and next time officials said there will be no warning. Sandy Gilmore, NBC News, the White House. In rhetoric chillingly reminiscent of the Gulf War, Saddam Hussein tells his people in a televised address, another battle has started, he vowed, we will defeat the infidels. Glendale. Well, Susan, the airstrikes against Iraq came as no surprise to two Indiana congressmen. Congressman Andy Jacobs says he supported the president's decision to bomb Iraq. Congressman Dan Burton also agreed with the president because Iraq had plenty of time, he says, to comply with U.N. resolutions. Saddam Hussein has violated uh, the no-fly zone in both the north and the south. He's moved these missile units around, uh, endangering our pilots. He's gone into Kuwait on a limited basis, but nevertheless, he's violated there, so uh, he had to be dealt with. Apparently, the purpose of the raid, more than anything else, is to convince Mr. Saddam's colleagues that they should kill him, that they should assassinate him or else they're going to be uh, bothered by belligerents from the United States uh, from time to time at, the, at any provocation. If that is the purpose of the raid, then I, uh, I think it's probably a masterpiece of wishful thinking. Jacob says the best way to hurt Hussein is to cut off the supply lines between Jordan and Iraq. Susan? Well, Glendale Grissom Air Force Base in northern Indiana saw a lot of action during the Gulf War two years ago. This time around, it's quite another story. Jim Condellas brings this reaction from the base in Miami County, north of Kokomo. You'd never know there was an air attack going on halfway around the world. At barren, snow-swept Grissom Air Force Base, a few lone aircraft doing practice runs are the only evidence of activity on this January afternoon. Inside, a program designed to help military personnel enter the civilian world after the base closes. 
And even though action in the Gulf is the furthest from the mines here, we found a few thoughts on the Allied airstrike. Sometimes, you know, throughout the world we are needed as far as, you know, a defense mechanism. And if we are needed, then if that's the place that, that we have to go, then, you know, it's just something that we have to do. We should have a firm grip on uh, what we're doing there and show this uh, madman that uh, we're not dealing with him anymore in the future because it's just a pain. I think we should have got him earlier. We stopped too, too soon the first time. If Grissom Air Force Base were to have a hometown, this would be it, Bunker Hill, Indiana. And opinions here about the attack seem to have a certain similarity. <laughs> At Birdie's, they watch developments on TV. He didn't follow the rules and was getting. I think they should have done it the first time. Should, should have never had to go back the second time. Should have took care of him the first time. The pro-military sentiment continues in Bunker Hill, even if, as one resident told me, the base closing will bring hard times to this Air Force town. Jim Condellis, WTHR, Indiana's News Channel, 13. Grissom, whose air refueling wing played such a vital role in the air war over Iraq and Kuwait in 1991, is set to close in 1994. Well, two years ago, this Sunday night, we all watched the news reports as American bombers blasted Baghdad. The fireworks in the night sky two years ago set the scene for the beginning of the Gulf War. This time, the night in Baghdad was quiet, and instead of the massive waves of bombs, the U.S. targeted specific military targets. Well, hardly anyone is surprised, but reaction to the air raid varies a great deal from outright approval to downright fear of another war. Oh, I think it was, I think it was a real good idea, and I think we should have done it a lot quicker. I think we should have laid down, laid down the rules, and after the second incursion, we, sh we should have been there. I think it needs to be done. I mean, he's crazy. Saddam Hussein is crazy. Nobody likes to see war, but you can only warn a guy so many times. I'm all for it, um, but then on the other hand, I wish they had went ahead and took care of it uh, the first time. I don't think anyone is um, too happy with the idea of maybe their family or their loved ones having to go through this again. I have two boys that are in college, and uh, I don't want them to go to war over Iraq. I really don't want to see them killed over Iraq. One person doubts there will be another war, saying Desert Storm didn't leave Hussein enough to fight with. Now it's your turn to speak out in our exclusive poll survey. Do you support the attack on Iraq? Call 239-1013 to vote yes or no and see your vote count on Indiana's news channel tonight at 6 o'clock. A Speedway man who lived in his parents' basement held them hostage for three days before one of them was able to call 911. Before the night was over, he was dead. Mike Shu pieces together what happened. 44-year-old Fred Vitus died on his parents' doorstep. A single gunshot blast from police after he tried to shoot the chief of police. Negotiations failed when Vitus wanted to talk with the president and God. He also said something about we wanted to take his heart. Apparently heard something on the, on the news uh, this evening about someone needing a heart. and He thought that uh, he'd been picked. Up all night, today, neighbors gather to talk about what happened. He would come to the front door every so often and he'd yell obscenities and things incoherent and he'd go boom, 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 slam the door and go away and then he'd come back to the door again. I, I assume they were probably corresponding with him by telephone. I don't know. But this went on for a period of almost two hours. But it sounds like maybe he wanted to die. The people in this neighborhood say that Fred was a likable guy, kind of kept to himself but never caused any trouble and there were never any family problems at the Bitus household. 73-year-old Nick Bitus is hospitalized after having his thumb shattered by a stray shotgun pellet. Two other pellets pierced his chest. Dorothy Bitus is prominent in her church, and today the family minister was inside cleaning up the mess. He thought there were people out to kill his yeah, parents. Him and his parents. Him and his parents. His family. He was telling everybody as they were there, their lives were in jeopardy, and, and uh, that's why he got out his guns and things. The shooting will be investigated and forwarded to the grand jury. Given the situation, if Officer Scales hadn't discharged his weapon, there's a very good possibility Chief Dine would have been shot. Mike Shue, WTHR, Indiana's News Channel 13. Also injured was Chief Jeff Dine, who was bitten by a police dog just after the shooting. The woman viciously attacked by pit bull dogs wants them humanely destroyed as soon as possible. The dog's owner wants to keep at least one of them alive. 
Danny Oates isn't talking about the charges against him. He's accused of having unlicensed, unvaccinated, and uncontrolled vicious dogs. The pit bull dogs were running to a, through a northeast side park when Caress Garten says she was attacked. She's still recovering from a severe leg injury. Uh, I'm very disappointed that um, the dogs cannot go on and, and be humanely destroyed and that we may go to court to trial. Um, I, I fear for the public. I, I will continue on to try and make sure that these dogs are humanely put down. Today's hearing failed to produce an agreement and a verdict trial. Well, it's back to wintertime. The winds certainly made Definitely. that difference today. Boy, Boy could you feel it? Uh, yes. From what, about 10 o'clock through to this afternoon, yeah. they were gusting in the upper 30-mile-an-hour range. Not this hour, but last hour, they were reporting some freezing drizzle out at Indianapolis International. So be aware that there could be some areas with freezing precipitation tonight, and that means the bridges, of course, first will be uh, the ones to slick up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, what's going on outside right now? The skies are cloudy. Officially, it's uh, 27 at the airport. We have 28 downtown now with that west wind at 21, pushes the wind chill temperature into one below. Barometers on the way up. That's part of the good news that we have for you. Will I have more good news? You'll just have to stay <laughs> tuned and find out. Well, thanks, Bob. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Okay, right. thanks, Bob. Still to come live at 5, the only Indiana connection to the inaugural parade is preparing for a trip to the nation's capital. Plus... Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and bird seed. Should you buy one of the new interactive media machines? Consumer Reports has advice later, live at 5. It's definitely very inviting and warm. Warm smiles, wonderful smells, and delicious food. It's the atmosphere and the attitude of the people. I've liked every waiter and waitress I've had there. It's a reasonable price, great food, sure good is. service. I feel at ease. I got a lot of elbow room. So you can go dressed up or you can go casual. Olive Garden is casual. Yeah. Come as you are. Be yourself. I mean, it's it's just a nice environment. You it's know? just like going to the small cafes in Italy. I feel very pampered. For no money down, you can have the fur coat you've always wanted at the price you've been waiting for during our annual Manufacturer's Liquidation Sale at Day First of Carmel. For four days only, we're opening our vault with a selection never seen before in Indiana. There are hundreds to choose from at savings of 40 to 70 percent with the sizes and designer fashions. So hurry, we open our vaults but once a year, and now's the time. At Day First of Carmel, the sale of the year, this Thursday through Sunday. At Stoops Buick and Country Used, our prices scare the competition, but they'll put a smile on your face when the other guys show you their best deal, new or used. Just smile and disappear to the store that saves you more. Stoops Buick and Country Used, where our prices scare the competition, but they'll make you smile. Bob Gregory's weather has the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society and features AccuWeather, an exclusive service of News Center 13. Well, at the surface, you could feel the weather today and that strong westerly wind that uh, is kicking in. The winds will diminish throughout the evening, but this is probably the best illustrator of what's going on in the upper part of the atmosphere. This area of low pressure which brought the snow is over Buffalo, New York, but you see the counterclockwise circulation around this thing. Major storm is going to be hitting on up the east coast as a new low develops along Atlantic City. We'll talk more about that at 6. But this circulation will continue around this thing, so you see how close sunshine made it. St. Louis got into some sunshiny skies today. Down in the Evansville area, or close to it, a peak at Old Saul for a while, and out in Kansas City. But for us, we're going to stay cloud-covered, and with that westerly, northwesterly flow, some snow flurries in the atmosphere, too. But look at the chilly numbers, if you will. A 21 in Champaign and a crispy 17 out in Kansas City right now. Sunshine, a 27 in St. Louis. Here are the numbers that we'll see in our area during the day tomorrow with cloudy skies, mid-20s, I guess, to the upper 20s in the southern half of the state. And again, some snow flurries can occur, especially in the northern third or so of the state. We're going to stay in this chunk of uh, colder air. You can see how far south that real cold air stuff will settle, and there's not going to be a great deal of relief, at least until we get into the latter part of the weekend. The jet stream flow will permit this coldest air to come down through the Great Lakes region and move on out to the east. The new storm will move up along the east coast, so they're going to get some heavy snows. Minnesota and Wisconsin, some of those spots, 
as much as 10 inches of snow out in Boston and Massachusetts. Boston specifically has had three inches of snow. They may get another six before it's over with in that area tonight. But for us, the forecast, be aware that we could have a touch of freezing drizzle around mixed with, oh, maybe some flurries uh, at times tonight. Skies will be cloudy. Our winds will diminish later on. The overnight low will come in at 20 degrees. Uh, during the day um, tomorrow, then, we'll have cloudy skies. It'll be cold, a passing flurry. 27 will be our high, and uh, our winds will uh, diminish 10 to 20 miles an hour out of the west tonight and then be westerly 5 to 10 miles an hour uh, for tomorrow. We'll have another period of snow or some flurries uh, late Friday into Friday night, the way it looks now. We may have to wait until Sunday before we get some sunshine. I've put the order in, but, you know, there's a waiting list. Definitely Gosh. a waiting list. But I, think, but I think we're right up there. It's been at, at least been about two and a half well, weeks. Well, it shows you how much influence I have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, work on okay. that, Bob. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Bob. The first space shuttle mission of the year is underway tonight, and the commander of the Endeavor says it was a good ride-up. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. Liftoff of the space shuttle Endeavor with NASA's newest tracking station in the sky. The Endeavour took the usual eight minutes to climb to orbit. The five-member crew's mission is to release a $200 million NASA communications satellite. And coming up, the Hoosiers deal a defeat on the number two team of the nation. Don Hines' sports hi reel has highlights. Plus, one of America's favorite musicals is at Clues Hall. You'll have a chance to win free tickets. We'll tell you how later, live at 5. Ponderosa announces economic recovery 1993. A new year, a great plan. Complete dinners at a price sure to brighten your economic outlook. Just $4.99. Juicy sirloin tips or tender broiled chicken. Complete with baked potato, grand buffet, and Sunday bar. All just $4.99. Ponderosa's economic recovery plan 1993. It's our way of stimulating your economy and your appetite. Come and get it at Ponderosa. Ben Groom talks about the early pre-plant flexibility of encapsulated bullet herbicide. Bullet pre-plant has worked excellent for us. It's given us season-long control. Even in no-till, Ben? The uh, residue is heavy, but the bullet seems to work down to the soil profile and give us excellent grass control. Get the earlier, stronger, longer performance of timed-release bullet herbicide, even in no-till. Just excellent, excellent results. Make your winter project easier with Ryobi Power Tools from Menards. Ryobi's new detail sander goes where others can't. Now just $39.88. This contractor circular saw is just $68.88. And clean up with savings on the Royal Dirt Devil Handbag, now only $31.95. The Dirt Devil Upright is on sale for just $129. Shop Menards for the best New Year's value. Save big money at Menards. Well, every home seems to have one, an electronics nut who loves to keep up with the latest gadgets. Don't we all know it? Now, the newest thing in home electronics is something called interactive media. They're very complicated systems, but designed to be easy on the user. Well, interactive media systems play audio and video CDs, and they allow you to control the action on your video screen. Tonight, Ann Ryder's Consumer Report takes a closer look. You may have already seen the commercials for Philips Imagination Machine, one of the first examples of interactive home multimedia. Now Philips has captured some of the most educational and entertaining experiences imaginable on a new kind of compact disc. Consumer Reports recently tested the Philips system and one from Commodore. The units each cost more than $600 and software costs between $20 and $400. Both systems use computer technology to let you select pictures and sound from a program. In this one, from Sesame Street, you can choose to visit Big Bird's Nest. Then, by moving the pointer to a book, Big Bird will read to you. Oh, boy. Little Miss Muffet Bird. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and bird seed. The testers liked some of the software. It was easy to use and uh, it was very educational, um, but there aren't a whole lot of good programs available. Another thing to be aware of is that the two machines use two different kinds of discs. Discs written for one machine won't play on the other. 
Consumer Reports thinks it is likely that one format will eventually dominate and become the standard. In the future, interactive multimedia players could transform the home in the same way that VCRs have. But the hardware and software aren't quite there yet. Uh, also, we expect the price of these players to come down considerably. So the best advice is not to buy interactive multimedia as a gift this year. Both machines tested to play standard audio CDs in the addition to the software for the interactive media. Mm. Susan? Well, they still carry your groceries to your car, and if you're really lucky, they might even help you win a million dollars from the Hoosier Lottery. Gould's Market in Greencastle has sent more contestants to the Hoosier Millionaire Television Lottery Show than any of the state's other 2,300 lotto cash retailers. This week, they will send their fifth customer to a taping, the most from one retailer since the lottery started in October of 1989. We're still learning more about the U.S. raid on Iraq. Tom Cochran is working on our top story at 6 o'clock. Tom? In fact, Susan, late word from the White House is President Bush is ordering more troops to Kuwait, a battalion that is about 600 to 800 American forces have been ordered to the border with Iraq. We'll have more developments and Indiana reaction at 6 o'clock. Also at 6 o'clock, a surprising problem for a suburban Indianapolis community. Teens are smoking crack cocaine in alarming numbers. That and more coming up at 6 o'clock right after hard copy. All right, thank you, Tom. And as you heard, still to come, an update of our top story. Plus, the hurry and Hoosiers are leading the Big Ten. Don Hines Sports Reel has the story next, live at 5. Don't go away. Winter, it's a fact of life, and with it comes rust, brought on by the salt trucks. That's why now is the best time for Zvart rust protection, protection against what the salt trucks throw at you. So before you start seeing this or this, take a look at this. Right now, get one-third off the Zvart Tidy Car Rust Protection Package and save one-third on rust protection and protect shop. Both one-third off, just two seventy-nine. Hurry, offer ends soon. If you haven't tried the three great sandwiches on Wendy's 99 cent super value menu, here's what you're missing. Excuse me, ma'am, what you got there? A uh, junior bacon cheeseburger? Oh, a 99 cent junior bacon cheeseburger made with fresh beef. Pretty good, huh? I could eat one every day. Feel free. Excuse me, kids, is that a country fried steak sandwich and a junior cheeseburger deluxe? Yep. yep. Mind if I ask you what you paid? Yep. yep. 99 cents each, you say. Well, there you have it, folks. Three sandwiches, 99 cents each on Wendy's super value menu, where you don't pay more, you just get more every day. Now, driving the car that's been driving you crazy is easier than ever before with Auto Show Bonus Dough from your Pontiac Pack. Get $500 factory cash back on Grand Am, Bonneville, and Transport. Plus, get another $500 in Auto Show Bonus Dough. That's $1,000 cash back. Hurry, Auto Show Bonus Dough coupons are available only at the Auto Show or at your Central Indiana Pontiac Pack dealers. Offer ends January 18th. Don't deny it. Don't give it It's the biggest appliance sale in America at the biggest appliance and electronics superstore. It's the National Home Appliance Sale at Sears Brand Central. America's favorite brands are on sale. Kenmore, GE, Whirlpool, KitchenAid. And many items are at their lowest price ever. Like this large capacity Kenmore six-cycle washer and matching dryer. Save $80 on the pair. Get to the biggest appliance sale in America. The National Home Appliance Sale at Sears Brand Central. You can count on me. Sears Home One week from today, the presidential inaugural parade gets underway in Washington, and the Indianapolis Police Department's motorcycle drill team will be there. Just going to a staggered line front, okay? We're going to practice this for a little while until we get good. The team's practicing hard for its Washington debut. The last time that IPD appeared in inaugural parade was in 1969. Many of these officers were just kids back then, so this is really a dream come true. It's a great honor. I'm really proud to be a part of this group uh, and be able to do that. I think it's great for, uh, for the group and for the state of Indiana and the city of Indianapolis. I hope we uh, represent the city well. I think it'll be a lot of fun. What do you think being the first woman, the only woman on this drill team? Well, I don't, I don't see it to be a big difference. It's no big deal. I'm just one of, one of the guys when I'm at work. The drill team leaves for Washington next Tuesday. Any keeps its popularity year after year with its comic strip style and optimistic feeling. The current version of Annie is here this week for an eight-run performance. 
Pat Carlini talked with actor John Shuck, who plays Oliver Warbuck. He says of all the shows he's done, Annie charms the audience every single time. Probably because it feels, you know, and this is, I'm not trying to be hokey or corny, but it's a love story that has great appeal. And it's also about uh, optimism and the faith that if you believe good things, good things will come to you. Uh, and that's not naive. I think we all hold on to that wish. John Shuck is known for his roles in Star Trek, Macmillan and Wife, and the MASH movie in which he played the dentist. And he runs through Sunday at Clues Hall. You can call ahead for special family discounts tonight and tomorrow night. They are family works nights, and children under 12 are eligible for half-price tickets. We have four free tickets to Sunday afternoon's 2 o'clock performance for the 13th caller at 636-1313. Well, every Hoosier fan wishes they had a ticket to last night's barn burner in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Don Hines Sports Grill has the highlights. <laughs> Hi again, everyone. This is how Michigan's Steve Fisher and Indiana's Bob Knight saw the last second shot of James Voskel come up short. That shot was for all the marbles since Todd Leary never got to take a one and bonus free throw because of a lane violation. Alan Henderson not only blocked the last shot of the game, he also made the hoop and won it 76-75 for the Hoosiers. We probably played uh, about as well as we're capable of playing uh, to win the ball game. Now, Purdue has to regain some of its confidence having lost its last two ball games after having won the previous nine. Wisconsin provides the opposition and will be in West Lafayette for highlights and post-game interviews. Our Pacers have won a couple straight and the majority of their games are at home this month, so they ought to improve dramatically on that one game below 500 record. Coach Bob Hill has been getting superior play from both his guards, Pooh Richardson and Vern Fleming. It's nice now that they're both playing so well that you know, it doesn't matter. You just put one or the other in, and, and they keep us running. Vern's playing at a very high level, very confident, and uh, we're, we're, we're lucky right now. I just hope we can ride this for a long time. Richie Adubato is gone as coach of the Dallas Mavericks. He asked for a vote of confidence, and they gave him one. Garfield Hurd is the interim coach. I'm Don Hine. We're live from Lawrence North in the county, turning at 6, and we'll see you then. And there's more ahead for you live at 5. We'll have an update of our top story coming up. Stoops. At Stoops Buick and Country Used, our prices scare the competition, but they'll make you smile. Oh, if only you could get away to some charm. Oh, with a nice warm fireplace and out of this world. Yum, yum, yum. And if only they had an indoor pool, great shopping, and if only someone could help you pay for it all with some nice cold cash. It's all yours with Indiana's Cold Cash Coupon Book. For hundreds of getaway bargains, call 1-800-677-9800. 800-677-9800. Hi, this is Wendy again for Ladies Only. I'd like to tell you about some of the women Ladies Only has helped. Dina has lost 18 pounds. Deneen is now 88 pounds lighter. And look at Patty after losing 68 pounds and 80 and a half inches. So become the woman you've always wanted to be at the club designed exclusively for women, Ladies Only. Enroll now for one half off our regular rate. Call our Northside Greenwood or Columbus location. Updating tonight's top story now, dozens of American and Allied aircraft bombed missile sites in Iraq in retaliation for weeks of provocation by Saddam Hussein. Within the hour, Hussein went on Iraqi television to tell his people, the criminals have returned. They will be defeated. The White House says additional action is possible. A battalion of American forces are ordered to Kuwait to protect the border. Indiana Senator Richard Luger supports the military move. The decision of President Bush to strike military targets that threatened patrolling American aircraft was clearly justified given repeated Iraqi violations of the Desert Storm ceasefire accord. We'll have more on this developing story here on the News Channel at 6 o'clock. The Christmas clearance sales have given way to the January white sales, but can your budget handle more purchases? Think about what you need and not to just buy because something is on sale. 
Coming tomorrow live at 5, Ann Ryder's Budget Bargains has some tips on when and where it's best to purchase clearance merchandise, something we can all benefit oh, from. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for this Wednesday edition of News Center 13 Live at 5. I'm Glendale Jones and for Allison Gilman. Thanks for tuning in on us tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. We're going to leave you now with some, with some skyward shots of the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Well, the area of maximum air pressure.